Zelda in Furne Podcast. Bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast. My name is Chris Kitchen, taking over the reins for this week's podcast, episode 64. Isn't that awesome, guys? I'm sure it is. I want to thank Brandon and company for that awesome intro, and uh, let's get into some of this week's topic. All right, guys? So, Star Wars Battlefront had a post-release, and a lot of fans thought it might have been as, not as overwhelming as they thought. Black Friday is this week, and there's been super sales between your Microsoft platforms, your PlayStation platforms, but not as much as Nintendo platforms. What's up with that, guys? Fallout 4 patch notes have been released, and they have a lot of new bug fixes. Let's see how that goes. And the Legend of Zelda survey for 2015 results have came in. Alright guys, thank you for joining me this week. My name is Chris once again, and this week I'm joined by... Hi, it's this guy, it's Colin, the... The, the one that you're all here for. <laughs> How are you doing, Colin? I'm doing A-OK. Very, uh, very slow, crappy week last week, but things are picking up. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we're on the podcast now, man. Yeah. Time to, time to do our thing. A whopping four days later. <laughs> there we go. Hello, I'm Luke. Um, returning once again. Hello. From the land of the kangaroos and the spiders? Yeah. Um, it's a bit spooky. It's a bit I know spidery. it's only been like three and a half hours since the last podcast uploaded, <laughs> but did you did you happen to listen to our uh, our last one? I uh, had a little um, standby for you. Actually, no, I did not. I've been quite busy this week. Um, well, you better hop on that. I will be sure to. <laughs> Good. And the final and most special guest of all this week. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's Adam. Uh, Chris is taking over this episode, but I'm still here because I can never leave. Uh, we're doing this episode a little early because uh, we have Thanksgiving breaks and eatings to get to. Uh, but yeah, Chris wanted to host an episode and I am lazy, so I took him up on it immediately. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and uh, with that, let's uh, let's get into this week's uh, discussions. Uh, first and foremost, I thought it'd be, you know, a normal thing to ask you guys, what have you all been playing this week? Oh, uh, can I start? Yes, of <laughs> course, Adam. Uh, Chris, you'll be happy to know that I decided to finally get into one of the best Zelda games of all time, according to you, Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. And Ooh, I am Adam, making it a goal to pay, play a dungeon every single week at least. So far, I've made because it through the first... Because like f- four dungeons, five dungeons. <laughs> well, I've made it through the first dungeon. It'll be a, it'll be a short series. Um... I made it through the first dungeon. I really like it so far. I really like the the Minish power getting small. Uh, Ezlo is really charming. I really like what he's he's uh, been saying so far. Like he, go around the fantastic, house. He's fantastic, right? Yeah, he's, he's great. He, he's the coolest guy. We go around the house and he's like, "Oh, this is your house? I guess this is my house too. Where's my room?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just he assumes everything is oh, his. He's, and this he's was, self entitled. And this is really cute. Like you're like go to your bedroom and he's like, "Oh, do you want to take a nap or something?" And you, you like for sure. And they're like cuddling in bed, and Ezlo like Link wakes up and he has to like shake Ezlo awake, and it's super cute. Yeah, it's like, a great game. Yeah, it's really nice, and it, it's weird because it seems like there's a lot more confusion uh, in this one. Like I felt weirdly lost, like not like I have no idea what I'm doing, but I had to look up a guide just to figure out where it, I was it supposed makes to you go. Yeah, it makes you want to like really explore the world for yourself and figure everything out. Right, but it was like, oh, you need to go to get this. Uh, you need to go get the, the elemental shards or whatever. And I, mm-hmm. I leave the the Minish world thinking, oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. But actually, what they wanted me to do was stay in the Minish, Minish world in the village and go to this specific castle thing to go to a shrine. Which yeah, I don't know how I was supposed to assume that it was poorly worded. But but it's... other than that, it's it's very cool i i had a lot of fun there's like this gust item in the first dungeon that kind of has a cool you suck uh, it all in and then you spit yeah, it all out it's like it's like luigi's mansion but uh in the zelda game so yeah that's what i've been playing this week awesome i've what been playing you? um recently i got back into verdun which is a game we've briefly mentioned a few times on the podcast best game uh yeah it's you know it's it just occurred to me the other day that so far, Verdun might actually be, like, my game of the year for this wow. year. Wow. Uh, because I, I, it's the one game I've been playing all year, 
I can still pick it up and play and play for hours on end. And it's on top of that, it's a it's a success story. It shows that green light and early access can work if the developers aren't just, you know, total idiots. Right. Um, Not to mention that game's been in development for like years. Yeah, it has. And it's it's actually shown progress like it's it's almost completely different from what it was when it first entered early access even yeah i remember you showed me that uh that games they they shared a video with GameSpot about like from like what it was uh what like seven years ago yeah like what it is no, now 2006 i want to say almost mm, yeah you know nine years ago it's crazy yeah good stuff uh, what about you luke luke skywalker um i've been point. playing a lot of this game called uh verma Jude or Verma Tired, one of the two, I can't really remember. Oh, I like that game, it's uh, good. It's so fun. <laughs> it's a good um, it's a good game. <laughs> um would you uh would you say ten out of ten? I'd say it's a good eight out of ten. I'd say it needs a lot of work because it is still uh like beta or alpha, I think. Um No, it's it's been released. Oh really? Yeah, no, it's finished, it's done. Oh wow. So um I found a few glitches and stuff then that I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> like any great game out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I've put about 10 to 12 hours into it because I've been pretty busy this week. Uh, but yeah, it's quite fun. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Um, myself this week, I'm still trying to 100% Fallout 4 before the DLC comes out. And then uh, I also picked up my my 3DS this week, and uh, started, I picked up Smash Brothers again, because uh, you, I've been playing Smash Brothers on my Wii U since, I, I don't know, since I got it, and I have, I've sort of neglected my, my 3DS. However, I, I, I'm playing as the characters normally play as, which is uh, Toon Link, Mega Man, Roy, and um, uh, Sonic on my 3DS, and I gotta say, like, characters like Mega Man, specifically, they w- I feel like they work way better on like the 3DS than it does on the Wii, or the, uh, the Wii U. Rather, just I feel like he controls like his controls are a lot more solid uh, on the 3DS uh, than like a controller for like the, the GameCube remote or something. What kind of like. made you realize that? Was it like was I don't know? I, I just, just I I had a few matches where I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, you know, I'm normally not this good <laughs> at Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got to play with uh one of the one of the fanboys we got out there, uh, homie Jake. Uh, that's what I, that's what we call him back home. Um, and he, he agreed, like, cause him and I, I think we're like equally balanced, um, we're equally balanced, like play, Smash Bros players. And usually I, I can, I can execute moves as well as I can on like, on like the GameCube remote than the 3DS. You know, he, he seems to be a lot more, um, I, I feel like it's me more as a player than it is as the character. I feel like the character is the same across the board, but me as a player, I, I just find the 3DS controller a lot more solid, which is weird. You know, that, yeah. that shouldn't be the thing. Um, I don't know. That's that's just me though. All right. But um, anyways, guys, we have important holidays and and special events that happened this last week and this week as well. Yeah, we got like, uh, uh, plenty of birthdays. We got. I I was thinking about this on my drive home today. I feel like every console's birthday is in November, yeah, just because that's when they release. But uh, we have some major ones. We'll say that much. Um, I knew this. Happy last birthday week. to the Odyssey. Happy birthday to the Odyssey. <laughs> You are truly the gaming gener- console of the next generation. Uh, you will be sorely missed. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's we not had the Odyssey's the... birthday. I lied. <laughs> well, I mean, we ha- I'll tell anyway. you what birthdays we did have this last week. We had the Super Nintendo, which turned 25. Like, Ooh. that's crazy. 25 years Ladies, ago. Ladies, get on that before it gets too old. I know, seriously. Um, Colin mentioned to me this one earlier this week. Uh, the Sega Saturn turned 21. Yeah. So he's like, old enough to drink. He or go, she. Go, go play, uh, a stall. Isn't there like a Sonic game on the Sega Saturn? <laughs> Actually, the complete opposite of that. <laughs> oh boy. There Let's is play, not a play, Sa- Sonic you game. You can on play the, Saturn. the Sega Saturn drinking game now with your Sega Saturn, which is you insert a random Sega Saturn library game into the Sega Saturn, and if it's good, you don't take a shot. You will die <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if you If you happen to own, like, pretty much the entire Capcom library of games for the Saturn, you won't be drinking at all. Because they're very good. Very uh, amazing different. home ports of uh, Street Fighter Alpha 1 to 3. You, you would know. They're good! Excuse me. It's a Capcom. <laughs> you know, it's Capcom uh, developed Minish Cap. 
Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Oh, that's not the only Zelda game they did. They also did uh, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, mm-hmm. which are very two, like, all, also some of my favorite um, top-down Zelda games for, like, on the mobile. They're pretty much the only other ones besides, um, I'm trying to think what else. A Link besides to the, the Past DS was ones. a ported uh, to the Game Boy Color, I think. Yeah, it was. You I were think, a port uh, to the Game Boy Color. You... <laughs> we are all ports to the Game Boy Color, especially when we had, like, the little cartridges. Link to the Past was ported to the GBA. No, it was also a port to that's Game Boy Advance. No, it was, it was port of the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, that's oh what, yeah, I think that's my bad. <laughs> that's what I. That's yeah, what yeah. I just said. It's not okay. I failed. We're sorry. Sorry. Not Go Game on. Boy Color. Another birthday that happened this last week was the the Xbox 360 turned ten, and the Xbox One turned two. Yes, it turned two, or no, it's three now. It came out in 2013. It's 25. Uh, <laughs> it's two year. years. The X Bone is officially a toddler. One to two. Exactly. And I'm sure the PlayStation's turned uh, like the same, like 10, 12. It's, to... it's turned 30 million units. That's what it's turned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> PlayStation 2, all time best selling console. Isn't the, like, uh, the PS4 just about to beat the GameCube in sales? Um, no. I all mean, right. if it's about to hit 30 million, it means it's past the GameCube. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I, I don't I... think it's past the PlayStation 2 yet, though. It's not going to. <laughs> yeah. You know, well,. Yeah, I feel like no console will ever be PlayStation 2, like, ever. They're adding um, PlayStation 2 emulator to uh, PlayStation 4. And... Let's let's just put a really big uh, we, we, asterisk let's... next to that one. Yeah, let's we can talk about that a little later in the podcast. Um, I actually had uh, another thing, because there's other special events going on this week, like Thanksgiving, guys. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, there's cool things coming. You know, the families get together. We uh, we, we kill a turkey and we eat it. That type of thing. Wait, we're yeah. supposed to kill it? Oh. <laughs> We've been um, skipping oh my. Stuff. Here in Australia, we actually have a tradition called givings of thanks. Um, it's where we slaughter a cow um, and then bathe in its blood for three years. Let, all right, let me ask, Adam, are we allowed to put that on the podcast? <laughs> Slaughtering cow and bathing its blood? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's fine, okay. We can you know, say Adam that we're I... Satanists. I don't care. It's not a curse word. A- Adam and I have a tradition... Well, at least it's it's it happened a year ago, so we're going to do it again this year during the Thanksgiving and the Christmas times. Even it's where we Hel- hold hands. Uh, and that's we, it. That's the whole thing. That's the that's it. And then we go on a nice little coffee date, and oh, then yeah. it, we go our separate ways, and we have fun. We have lots of fun. And someone else comes along, but you know that's that's that's, that's, that's neither just, here nor there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. So, uh, it was brought up to my attention that uh, what if what if Hyrule had a Thanksgiving? Like how would how would we be able to set up like a Hyrulean Thanksgiving like would it or, be like, messed from the beginning? Yeah, would it be messed up to eat a loft wing? I uh, you know I'm not really sure. Uh, what about like we put a bunch of cuckoos and uh, we you can't like, kind kill of roasted them. them? <laughs> oh my god, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we you can. try and kill a cu- uh, cuckoo, they will murder you. They will mess that you is, uh, up. That would be one, <laughs> that would be one bloody Thanksgiving. <laughs> I would uh, I'll say that much. There would be no thanks, only cheers. I feel giving. like we wouldn't. What do we? I mean, we get to eat fairies, sort of. Like we, we don't eat them. We just trap them in a bottle and then we shake them out and then they fly around us. And that's our nourishment. You make that's fairy all pie. <laughs> but then they'll, they'll just fly out around us. And then we won't. We'll lose the enjoyment of actually eating the food, and we'll just get like you know, regain our energy and our strength, and uh, maybe a little bit of brotherhood, and sisterhood. Um, but that's about it. Of the travel. You know, I feel like that brings up a second question: Is Link a vegetarian? No, what he's, the heck he's, is he? He, he drinks milk. Uh, he's already well, not I mean, a vegetarian. That, that doesn't mean he's vegetarian. That just means he's not a vegan. What's vegan. that other thing you can be? Yeah, he's not a vegan. But he also eats fairies, so. Unless it's like <laughs> vegan milk. Uh, yeah, he. I think I'm pretty sure he eats the fairies. Fairies no, are vegan. <laughs> <laughs> is there vegan milk? I don't even know. Uh, no. Yeah, there yes. is soy milk. You guys don't remember the the legendary scene in Wind Waker where. Link just kind of sighs, takes out a bag of beef jerky, and just starts chomping away. Yeah, <laughs> got nothing else to do. It's one of my favorite idol animations. Oh, of I, all I time. thought we were, I thought we were gonna talk about the scene where he uh, goes to a like uh, a floating restaurant, and they're like, "Oh, uh, would you like some of the this chicken parmesan?" He's like, "No, thank you, sir. Do you have any spinach?" It's more like hit hat hit. <laughs> <laughs> we're not only gonna talk about the scene where he in Twilight Princess when he's in dog form and he looks into a mirror and he's like, hmm, if I wasn't this dog, I'd eat it. <laughs> <laughs> that, sound, that sounds pretty accurate. Twilight though. Princess is actually the story about how he becomes a vegetarian. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's it's, just like, what it's have not I really done? Mid is, mid is more of a side plot. Twilight Realm, eh. Gandalf's well, not even on the what radar. He does I, eat, then, then, I guess that makes Minish, Minish Cap the story where Link becomes like a schizophrenic if he always talks with his hat. I think we actually finally figured out what happened to uh, Navi in Ocarina of Time. Thank Ada. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he can't find her. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's, he's not really sh- looking for Navi, he's just looking for another fairy to eat. <laughs> yeah. And then he, see, he sets his eyes on Tattle and Tattle and, and he's, he's like, ooh, yummy. I never had yellow or pink, purple fairy before. That would be excellent. Well, wait a minute, you guys. Where did the purple link go in Triforce Heroes? He was pushed down a well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds just about right. Yeah, beginning of the game, you started up. Uh, it just it, you just see regular link pushing purple link down a well. It's really weird. Miyamoto like... insisted that be the first thing the player saw. Insisted, and then it's just like fifteen minutes of. Him falling down this really long well, occasionally hitting something and just getting really hurt. Does he does he end up learning, uh, landing in Terminal? Is the question. No, he no. just dies. He just dies. Yeah, Jeez. You know, Adam. Speaking of other things <laughs> that hurt that hurt players. Okay. Um, so I I was looking at some some Black Friday sales this week because you know, uh, this year I've uh, the holiday some, of violence. Some, yeah, exactly. I, I, I I'm looking to get the best video game deals. You know, mm-hmm. shop um, online. So, I, right, right. I, I don't mean, try like. I, I really places. don't get how there are still people who get up super early in the morning and and try to go for these big Black Friday deals when you can. Just, to be honest, you though, can just stay at home and now buy these things online. As a so, I've worked retail the last like four years of my life, and uh, I've worked at Black, meaning I've worked Black Fridays the last four years of my life. Um, and I've noticed that like the trends of like when people come in and when they leave. It's in because of like where I work at, they open at like 6 p.m. on on Thanksgiving and then they're open until like, you know, Friday until closing time. I think Um, I think the smartest thing I've ever heard about, like going to shop on Black Friday was um, in a very early Mega 64 podcast. They mentioned how they they all like hang out around the time all the stores like open up at Black Friday. mm -hmm. They just sit around. They wait three hours. And then they actually go to the store because everything's still there. Oh, you know, like when I was when I, during like I would work these shifts, like people would come in between six and one a.m. or one six to two a.m. and then it would be completely dead. Yeah, within, exactly. Like, the malls between the hours of like three a.m. to like eleven a.m. Friday morning. So yeah. you honestly don't need to go like in between. You don't, I mean, if you want to choose that like open window between three and eleven a.m. to go, I mean, you'll be good. You go to these stores and you'll get whatever you want. I uh, and also it depends on what you're looking for too, though. Yeah, I only went on Black Friday shopping for the past three years with my friend Zach, uh, just because I used to spend uh, my Thanksgiving dinners with him and his family, uh, which is always really nice, and uh, they would always pressure me to go with them for uh, Black Friday shopping. Um. I never really got the, into the hype of it myself, uh, but it I, was I, it was just a, it was a nice experience. I think for some people, it's really just like kind of another thing that people do, like a like yeah. a tradition sort of thing to go Black Friday shopping. It's not really as much about the deals themselves. I feel like it's the maybe the first time it's it's like the first couple times it's it's fun and it's, and it's cool. I guess mm-hmm. I mean not that waiting in lines for things is like fun and cool, but like just being with like the people there, you know. Right. It, I mean, uh. You saw, especially in the U.S., um, this is where I'm, I want to say only in the but U.S. Like, <laughs> like um, we started to have more and more excessive Black Friday sales to the point that some stories were like early Black Friday sale starting at seven on Thursday, and now um, it seems like after like five years of this going on, it seems like people are finally like, no, we don't want this anymore. So I think they're starting to calm down again. Yeah, uh, um, but it, it was Microsoft... getting really out of control for a couple of years. Microsoft actually started their online Black Friday deals uh, three days ago. If you're an Xbox Live Gold member, all the sales they have are already like up. Uh, and and Best Buy is doing all their stuff online. If you're a uh, part of their Elite Rewards program, you can just get whatever the hell you want. Their now. Geek Club? No, that's no, super that's, troop. That's, they make the computers work again. Adam, stop <laughs> with the silliness. Isn't Black Friday um, actually? Um, just no, go ahead, Luke. Just an Australian question here. Sorry about um, this. It's actually on Friday. Um, but like, 
Isn't that the one where um, like five people died last year on it? Yes. Oh, that yeah, happens people, every single year. Yeah, somebody somebody gets very hurt trampled for, every why? single yeah, time. Trampled. What the yeah. fuck is the point? Why? Like, what is it celebrating? Because people are terrible. Because people it's, really want they're celebrating HGTVs. great deals. That's the only thing. It's like just <laughs> the worst part is that Black Friday deals aren't even that good. At most, you no. only save like maybe a hundred or two dollars. I, I, I prefer Cyber Monday deals. Yeah. It's, it's speaking of bad deals though i just want to talk about this really fast i was looking at like video game deals for black i thought we were going to talk list. about our favorite episodes of deal or no deal <laughs> i was gonna get really excited <laughs> seriously though like i saw a bunch of like i guess pretty great deals for like you know microsoft and sony like products like playstations and xboxes out the wild zoo and all the games that come out for them all the third party stuff but not a lot really for nintendo and i found that kind of i mean I'm. I guess we're no strangers to Nintendo not really having many sales, but like, they've been kind of standing their ground on this for a few years now. Like that they, they won't have as many Black Friday sales. Well, I mean, well, they, they don't have, have sales in general on their products. I mean, they have the the Splatoon bundle and the, the Splatoon Mario Smash Bros. Bros. I saw that uh, I in think, the GameStop yeah, ad. It's I like for two seventy nine. Nintendo's plan two forty nine is, is usually just oh, like geez. it's usually like oh our stuff is just cheap enough that it will sell. Yeah. Well, anyway, because I remember last year was really good for the Wii U uh, on Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, because you had the uh, the Best Buy bundle that was like the Smash Brothers Wii U. It was like the, the Mario Kart Wii U that came with Smash Brothers and Donkey Kong Country Returns. Like it was pretty crazy. That sounds awesome. And then this year we're of course getting the uh, Splatoon Smash Brothers bundle. Which if that doesn't sell like every single system, because that itself comes with like the two. Like of the best selling games for that console I can think of. Yeah, you right. know, like I I don't know. I'm just I'm a little surprised because I really wanted to get stuff for like my 3ds, my Wii U, um, this this coming year. But like, and I'm a physical copy kind of dude. You know, uh, I was hoping to get something, but I'm I'm not sure where to find the good deals. GameStop doesn't have them. Walmart doesn't have them. <laughs> Target doesn't have them. What I need I need well, there needs to be some sort of shining light that comes. Let me down. show you. Let me, let me. Nintendo is going to do some sort of online. Sale. Let me. They're let me hook you up. Not very good, but there's Chris, something. I mean, they're, Chris, they let me hook better. you up. I got this guy. His name is Larry. Don't worry about it. All right. He's, uh, <laughs> he's got some. He's got on, some good. Don't worry about, about it. Don't worry about it. He's got some good deals. You're gonna get. You're gonna get yourself a Wii U for ten dollars. Don't worry about it. Don't ask where it comes from. Don't ask about the stains. Don't worry about it. Just <laughs> just take it. Give him the ten dollars. Go your separate ways. Be at the dock, 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Don't ask any questions. Don't ask which dock. You know which dock. I don't have to tell you again. I swear to God. Can I bring little Tony with me? Ask me which dock. I'm going to smack you upside the head. Five across the ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like missing all the electricals and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, could, it could also totally be that um, all of these stores only want to advertise their deals on games that just came out this year, and there's not really much in the way of Nintendo to, like, right. shove in your face in terms of advertising. Because I'm seeing... <laughs> Hell, I, at least I can go get Wolfenstein, The Old Blood, and even uh, The New Order for, like, ten bucks each. Good! They're some of the best games of the last uh, couple of years. You, you should yeah. be getting those. You should be getting those, folks. If you buy yeah. Wolfenstein, The New Blood, and you let it sit on your shelf for a couple of, like, months, does it turn into Wolfenstein, The Old Blood? Um, I don't think the new blood exists. I don't know how the new order would turn into the old blood, but... I mean, because it gets old. Yeah, but it's an order. (laughs) It's Uh, an order, not blood. The jokes. Adam's got them tonight. (laughs) Um, so speaking of awesome games to get for the coming holidays, what about some other, some other cool gift ideas, guys? Yes. I know, Colin, you you had... The severed head of your enemies. Yes, Um, very much. Yeah, or like... Maybe a box full of rupees. That'd be cool. I would if you're gonna give me anything for Christmas, guys. I want rupees in in U.S. conversion. That's money. That's if you have three siblings, uh, and and you, uh, they all have three DSs. You can get them a copy of Triforce Heroes, and all three of them oh, play it on the same system. Because that'd be awesome. What if they share a three DS though, Adam? Well, then you get them two three DSs and a copy of Triforce Heroes because they need a copy of Triforce Heroes in their lives. They do need a copy of Trevor's. What they other do. what other Zelda games would you guys recommend for like the holidays? Like as good holiday gifts for the Legend of Zelda. If you could if you can get a, give anyone a gift of a Zelda game, which game would it be? Link Between Worlds or Triforce Heroes. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Um I know I know what I would give people. This and this would be a great Secret Santa thing too. I'd give them 
like amazing unopened copies of the Zelda CDI games. <laughs> You could you could you could totally send those my way. Were they bad kids? I wouldn't mind having. <laughs> That's like giving all you get coal this year, or the uh, the equivalent, which That's is. That's what the C stands for in CDI. Coal. <laughs> What's the D and the I stand for? Geez. Deposit. Entertainment. It's spelled poorly because they're stupid. <laughs> Deposit entertainment. Okay. Fun fact: yeah. I actually own a CDI plus a copy of Link to the Faces of Evil, and it's just as terrible as you think it is. Bad. You know, to be honest, those games aren't bad. They're just bad Zelda games. No, they're they're bad games. They're, they're just bad uh, games, dude. They're pretty yeah, terrible. They're just bad games. Are they pretty bad? Maybe I'm just speaking out of my butt. Yes, you um, are. That's right. Now, Colin, yeah. my friend Colin Duum, you mentioned to me about an awesome non-Zelda related gift um, that would be perfect for the holiday season. Yeah. Well, what is that gift? All right. So, as we all, you may or may not know, I I love playing the video games on you love the video games yes so you breathe video games you have video game gills i love i love the video games and i love playing video games on my pc uh i've been you know playing you doing but stuff. but but are you a pc elitist That's um yeah probably i've been oh jeez. been doing you collect all this retro awesome stuff and you still call yourself an elitist pc master race man I'm more of a, I'm more of a, I'm a more of a well-rounded kind of gal. I'm actually more like Atari Jaguar Master Race, you know, just throwing that out there. Okay, cool. Um, I can, I can deal with Atari. But Valve recently released all their, you know, Steam machines and all that crazy stuff. Basically, Didn't, all uh, the who's it's and what's it's. Basically, Wouldn't... Valve has been trying to make a living room PC, or at least mm-hmm. move uh, PC gaming into the living room to kind of show off the fact that. Gaming on a PC is now much better than it's ever been. The parts are cheap. Um, you can, you can, you don't need to have a giant tower full of random crap. Games are cheap. Um, it's convenient. And it's, yeah, it and it's just as easy to portable. get into as getting a brand new video game console. Because there's all these deals going on almost all the time. Yeah. So, so they've been advertising these three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollar PCs. Some two hundred dollars off. Yeah, and to most people who already own a gaming PC, it's the Steam machines don't look that uh, attractive because they're basic. Valve is basically saying like, "Oh, well, if you want to enjoy this console styled, you know, um, PC gaming in your living room, you basically have to buy a second computer that won't run any of the games that your tower can run because it runs on different software, uh, lower end hardware." All that stuff. So they decided to release a little box called the Steam Link. It is $50, and what it basically does is it outputs the video signal of your PC, and using the wonders of your of a wired Ethernet internet in your house, it just kind of streams the video to your TV, and you just hook up, up uh, and you just hook up a controller to it, and there you go. Now let me ask you something. Yes. Does it work better than the PlayStation TV? Absolutely. Okay, good. Because it, it works. TV and I had problems. Remote play. Listen, uh, PS4 remote play is terrible, and it, okay. and it still is. Um, if if you want to do it on no, Wi Fi, I, I went and bought have... a PS TV, and I had a I had a uh, an ich experience. I still have it because you know I'm I'm gonna make it work. I'm going to make this work. Good luck. It's a relationship I want to have, but like I'm, I'm very interested in getting a Steam, a Steam I, TV. I don't link. know what it is. The um, Xbox has done it great with Windows 10 streaming. The Steam Link does it Agreed. almost perfectly with um, just how it works. You just literally type a code into this uh, Steam client on your desktop, and you're here's a question away. about it. Yes, you know how when you stream from your Xbox to your PC, it, I think it lowers the quality to what 720. Um, depends on. It depends on what like quality settings on, you have it set on. On the PC, okay. So like you can have the same like quality settings on your PC. It's, it's and, like, 1080 60 on uh on Steam Link. That's not bad. That's awesome. That's actually not pretty normal. That's pretty great. Um, no, it's great. And then you have remote play, which if you try doing it over Wi-Fi, it's not going to work because Wi-Fi hates streaming video. Um, mm-hmm. and even over Ethernet, it sucks. I I had the um PS TV set up through Ethernet to my PS4, which was also plugged in. Uh, through Ethernet, and it just... To be honest, I had no idea my PS4 even had an Ethernet cable <laughs> to connect to. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> like, it, I, I just it, it looked like crap, that. it ran I, like I, crap, I, it kept disconnecting. Uh, remote play is just awful. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but Steam Link works fantastically. And even cooler, this is something I learned and it made me really excited. You know, it The way the Steam Link works is that whatever controller you plugged in, it just says it's an Xbox controller. Because most games are compatible with the Xbox controller. So you can even put like a PlayStation controller and it'll work? So what you can do is you can either have a wired 360 controller, a wired mm-hmm. Xbox One controller, a wired DualShock 3, a wired, or you can connect through Bluetooth the DualShock 4. I feel like you're you're grabbing all your controllers as you as you say these things. Nope. And oh, my I favorite, the one I actually go to, the Wii U Pro controller also works wirelessly. That's awesome. You just you just sync it up, you just hold the sync button and it works. That's fantastic actually. It's great. Um even you know how the buttons are switched on the uh the face? The X and Y and A and B are switched? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Steam but... Link actually accommodates to that. Oh, you can assign which buttons are which. Well, you can do that, but it actually recognizes that A and B and X and Y are switched. Oh, okay. So when it's you're like in the, the menus I mean... and it says press A to enter, when you press A, it still does that. It doesn't act as if, as if you're pressing B. Oh, okay. I get. I I can see how that, that could be very confusing, but it's awesome how they accommodate for all this stuff. Yeah. So uh, you would say that that could be a great present for any video gamer, well, video gamer that has PC goodness games. Yep. On their... I'd, I'd even recommend the PS TV because even as I just like. I mean, you recommend it to play. me, and it works for all my downloads and everything. I just I wish yeah. I could stream my PS4 games to it. The remote play is terrible, but, I mean, it, it has a great library of uh, indies and PSP games and PS1 yeah, games. Yeah, because I, I didn't want to have to go and download a PS... I didn't want to have to go buy a PS Vita, yeah. to be honest. Um, and Best Buy has them right now on sale for 20 bucks. so... Dude, yeah, I bought... Well, I bought mine for 30 but there 20 is not bad either. I don't think anyone wants to buy a PS Vita, to be honest. <laughs> no one does. I mean, I, I wanted Sony one, want but... To. At the moment, I, I just buying PS Vita doesn't seem the right thing, but buying PS TV sounds more logical. Uh, what do you? What about you, want, Adam? I just want to buy a Sony TV because Sony TVs are amazing. I have a Sony like, TV. Oh, an actual Sony <laughs> TV. If if I could ever just like stick to Sony TVs, I don't know if they're still making them anymore, but I would I would do that in a heartbeat. What, what what if I told you my my PlayStation Three and my PlayStation Four are are both connected to a Sony TV? Good man. Um. <laughs> That's what I call brand accommodation. I'd be inclined to agree with Colin. There's a lot of really good stuff uh, on Steam that you can play, and a lot of stuff you can get in multi packs. Like there's mm-hmm. there's a bunch of games that I know come specifically in packs of four. The ship literally gives you thousands of copies because it keeps <laughs> giving you an extra copy to give someone else if you've bought one copy. I think Adam, I feel like you've done this for me, and you, Colin, you just did I it have for me today. way too many copies of the ship. Please take them for me. I don't <laughs> Adam, want them. I, I love never, the ship. It's the best. And game they never ever. stop coming. Adam, Kyle, it's horrible. I'll never stop I hate coming. that game. This, you should um, just keep posting them on Twitter. I like give them out. Like give uh, away. You know, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Um, because I've I've actually had the Steam Link for a month because Valve was doing a thing where if you had pre-ordered them early enough, you had you got them a month early. So I actually got it last month, but I really was able to test it out um, over the weekend. And there's a few games I really want to recommend to people that either they're, you know, they're either picking up a Steam Link or they actually do have a living room PC. Um, Duck Game is great. Duck Game's fantastic. Duck Duck Game is amazing. amazing. It's a, uh, I, how would you describe it? Chaos. It's an arena shooter that features ducks. Yeah, it's a platforming arena shooter. Brawl tournament shooter. Um, I also want to recommend Lethal League, which is like a baseball fighting game. Oh, dude, that's an awesome game. It's great. Um, Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed, because you can also do split screen on it, and it's great. Jackbox and Party Pack Two. Jackbox Party Pack Two is fantastic, and Guns Gore and Cannoli, which is a side-scrolling one. Metal Slug Contra-esque uh, four-player co-op game and it's uh oh mm, that's a mouthful of game it is but it's really good i don't doubt you for a second uh, in fact in fact it's coming to the ps4 this week i i, I feel like this is a, this is a good uh, oh, i think we should have like a weekly thing where like colin gives us like a, a recommendation of the week of like a video game <laughs> just, like, i think we do that anyway games? yeah i mean you because i feel like you, you have like the most like knowledge about video games of, across the spectrum yes, I, th- I think we all know everything but like i think we we do that anyway i don't think we yeah, need I, feel like, yeah I feel like we to... do, do that anyway yeah but i'm just really great so um guns gore and cannoli check it out really great yeah so um we got a we got a few fan topics here guys yes we uh, do so uh, let, i'm gonna start with one right up here 
Uh, and th- I think uh, this one relates to a topic we've had the last two weeks, uh, but I, th- I felt that it was important to talk about it. This one comes from uh, our lovely guest, uh, Damon J, a.k.a. Link Pizza. So uh, Damon J asks, uh, how you guys feel about the characters being put in Smash for Wii U? I'm all for new characters, but it seems like they're really getting characters from just anywhere now. Adding a couple characters like Pac-Man, Mega Man, and Sonic, even Snake was weird, but it was like a bonus. Now it seems like they moved away and even try from even trying to add Nintendo characters. Just wanted to know your thoughts on it. Thanks. No problem, Damon J. That is a great question. And um, Cloud? it's interesting that you that you well, he asked the, how we feel about the characters being put in Smash. That was it was the first thing I said. Yeah, so, come on. Um, it's interesting what what he asks about like the whole Pac Man, Mega Man, like Sonic and thing because we all know that um, so Bandai and Nimco helped develop this last Smash Bros, which explains why Pac Man would be in the game. Uh, Capcom and Nintendo is sort of like a, a coming thing because, you know, they're not going to do anything with Mega Man. Nintendo is all for using him. Snake had his game. Uh, Snake Eater was on the 3DS. Uh, Sonic games have been on the Wii and the Wii U and all that stuff for, uh, in 3DS and I think the DS I mean, uh, for a while now. It was, it was more just, uh, it's more just a celebration of video games that the yeah. Smash Brothers seems to be trying to do, especially older games. I mean, if you look at just the lineup for this year's roster, I mean, this game's roster, you have Duck Hunt Dog, Pac-Man, Mega Man, Mario, Dr. Mario. You have a lot of older characters, even... Uh, not not like to mention, they, they, they advertise it's, it with, like, the years some of yeah, these yeah, characters was, came yeah. out. Like the, the All-Star mode is based on years, which is... It, this game is about uh, appreciating the classic. It's about, uh, you know, uh, I mean, fond-looking like, backs. Um, so it, it, it makes sense to have characters like Cloud. It makes sense to have characters like Sonic. These are characters that inspired people. These are characters that people grew up with. And not to mention, uh, just be, this is a thought. Would you rather have Cloud in a game like uh, PlayStation All-Stars? A game he probably should no. be in, but a game that sucks? Versus I, Smash Brothers, which is one of the best I mean, fighting games out there. When they did this in Brawl, they were kind of bonus characters. I mean, the only real reason Snake was in was because, like... Hideo Kojima's like wanted him since child Melee. was just like, hey, wouldn't it be great if like Snake was in Melee? Um and Sonic was just like, oh hey, now like, you know, Sonic can, you know, kick the crap out of Mario and vice versa. Um but it seems like with this one, they've they've decided to the theme this with this Smash Brothers has been like great characters that are representing all sorts of different periods in gaming. And mm-hmm. You know, all sorts of, uh, and it makes sense to then have Pac Man and, uh, Mario and Mega Man and Duck Hunt Dog. And they, they really Mew do have all their bases covered almost. Yeah. It's become, it's. They, they took the fighting icon Ryu and put him in a fighting game. I, I, I love Because, that. because gar- <laughs> guaranteed, like, if, if they had just stuck to Nintendo characters, they were just announcing Nintendo characters left and right, we'd be so bored of it. Yeah, because yeah, we, yeah. we know, know that the, the Smash ballot is going to be a Nintendo character, which if it's no, no, not, to, I'd be surprised. But. No, to be honest, like, them throwing Cloud at us, now that I think about it, it, it's sort of a better thing. They threw us, like, the oddball of of all oddballs. Yeah, no one was expecting Cloud. Yeah. And it's honestly, um, I know I said before about, like, you know, we had to worry about, like, oh, the another fighter type of thing. But honestly, like, I'm over that now. I'm up I hate I like, hate that the the idea that I know someone hate, being a sword fighter automatically makes them the same as everyone else because that's like saying everyone who punches is the same or everyone that uses magic is the same. You're just generalizing. It, to, no, to be honest, it, now it's just I want all the characters in this game. I want every character in the world in this game. Yeah, I'm excited um, for Cloud. I I didn't vote for him in the Smash ballot, but it's awesome. Like I was, I felt like honestly, a little kid I don't think that, anyone that voted for him. Like thinking about it, Cloud is like he was so. Uh, in, in such an impossible choice that nobody even thought of him. I'm sure. Yeah, I don't, very I'm few sure. people even considered writing men. Who knows? Who? What if? What if actually he had like the highest votes in the Smash Bros. We just don't even know because we don't even know the results. Well, the I ballot doubt that Paul's that passed. The ballot was still going while they were developing Cloud, so it doesn't even matter if he was the highest votes. They were developing de- developing him regardless, yeah, they, and they were going to put yeah, him in the game. I, I um, we don't even know who made it. From the or who's making it from the ballot because they still had to go through those results and then plan what characters are going to be coming through. The ballot, which had ended in October fifth, by the yeah, way, for anyone that's that didn't only a know. month ago. Yeah. So I, I doubt that it was Cloud that was doing the mo- getting the most votes, or even if it was, I doubt it affected their decision at all. All right. So, like, would you guys agree that, like, if it, if this game were strictly like just Nintendo characters, it would it would be a little more boring, a little more bland. I think it'd like, be in- fine. 
it just I think that by adding non Nintendo characters, I think that it adds a certain charm to it, and it does mm-hmm. really uh, reach out to people. I think it's it's kind of beautiful in a way because you know no matter how what game system you grew up with, if you're like me, you grew up with the Genesis. If you're like someone else, probably some of our listeners who grew up with N64 or an SNES or GameCube was your first system. You know these characters. You love these characters. And you're all going to be able to bond and make friends over these these characters. I know so many people who have made friends through the Smash Brothers community. I know so many people have made friends over Melee, over Brawl, over Smash 4. It's it's honestly welcomed with open arms. I love the idea of adding all, all, so all, all they need to do is add Banjo and Kazooie and they have a, a character no, from every he's platform. not worth it. Don't put him in no, the game. Just, anyway. Listen, because <laughs> then we have we even have like the Microsoft. I don't care here. about the bear. <laughs> listen, buddy. Care bear. Listen. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I just honestly, like Colin. Yeah. Would you honestly like be opposed if they were like, we're gonna put the Contra guys in, kind of like Ice Climbers, but the two guys from Contra or Metal Slug? Yeah, right. It would be cool. Be, it like, wouldn't be hype. I feel yeah. like they would be because what they if, represent them. What, what if they put ET from the ET game? That would be silly. And why? <laughs> <laughs> would you want you want to put in all the characters in the game? I'm just saying. I'm just saying it'd be it's silly. It'd be a waste of time. I'm just thinking the no, you're... like if you put the Contra characters in, they would be super overpowered because they both have like um heavy artillery weapons. Like I mean, so guns, does Mega Man, but just make sort of... his shots weak. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the Contra dude's uh shots would be more like the um like little max punches where they just kind of they just have the different uh they're they're rapid but they don't really do much like right damage unless you're right oh and they're like their their final smash is like the a roulette wheel of the different power-ups that you can get in the game yeah but it's Uh, never the good ones like um butter's power attack in uh stick of truth there you go oh yeah 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 i love that i i love that game i finished it by the way i don't know if any i don't know if i mentioned that last week but i finished the whole thing (laughs) and uh it was a wild ride. I'd never. It, it felt like it kept going on and on. Like it felt like I was done with the story, and then more stories happened, and it just got more and more ridiculous until it finally got all the way to Zombie Hitler. And I'm like, uh, this is where it has to be. This is where it has to end. At Zombie Hitler, it was amazing. Oh, jeez, that's great. <laughs> uh, well, we have uh, another fan topic I wanted to discuss. And by the way, if you have anything you want to submit to the podcast, like banner art theme songs, or a nice fan question, you can email us at zeldainformerpodcast at gmail.com. That's zeldainformerpodcast at gmail.com. Our next question comes from Aaron Troy from Ithaca, New York, who's also attending the the university, the Cornell University. I believe that's what it is. You're, you smarty pants. What are you doing messaging us? You should be building science stuff. Building science stuff, Chris, 2015. Thank you, Adam. Thank You're you. Welcome. So Aaron Troy says, uh, ever since Majora's Mask appeared on the wall of Ravio's store in Link Between Worlds, I've wondered what happened to Majora in the other timelines. Ganon's costume in Wind Waker has Majora eyes on the back, meaning that the, mic- the mask is referenced in all three timelines. Any theories as to what happened? And if not, maybe what makes them up, make some fun stories to explain where Majora will play into the adult and defeat timelines. Thanks for everything. I... Uh- well, the main thing I was going to say is in Majora's Mask at the very end, um, it actually loses its powers um, of like chaos and everything, like, and more or less it becomes a mask. So I was thinking the reason it uh, shows up in uh, Link Between Worlds is because it's got no power and, you know, it's just sort of a decoration at this point. Um, like, you think he just sold it? The, the Heavy Mask Mills someone just sold it? Yeah. To some guy for like 20 rupees? Yeah, and just like, here to take it's that. sort of like they take it out on Halloween and sort of do parties and shit yeah. with it. That sounds silly. It sounds obvious. It sounds like something that the, the, the mask salesman would do. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he would kind of hold that mask a little closer even just because he knows that, that the mask had danger and he doesn't want to fall. It. He doesn't want the mask itself to fall into another piece of danger. It's not a bad idea. Um, when you think about it though, what if it's like the mask might have lost its power, but what if the power is still roaming around in the, the Zelda universe as a whole? And what if it's made its ways into, like you said, the, the back of Ganon? And it, all you see is just like the, ma- the the eyes just representing like the evilness. Like it's it's dawned on Ganon now. I mean, it's not spoken, obviously. Remember, these are just theories. These are this is just a theory, a Zelda theory. Okay. <laughs> um. So just things like that. Um. 
I, li- I like the idea, though, it's just that the masculine just kind of sold it to some guy. He didn't care. He just, yeah, take it. I don't need it. I, I like the idea the that there is back. some kind of relation between Link to New Worlds Link and previous Links. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that the mask has played in to that universe in a in like a unspoken sort of side story. Maybe like uh, instead of losing his horse and everything to to Skull Kid, uh, that re- that reincarnation or that ancestor of Fat Games Link actually ended up not getting tricked by the kid with the mask uh, and ended up beating him rather quickly. And so it just kind of became like a family heirloom, which is why it's on his wall since the beginning of the game. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think it's interesting to think of it as something that's just... Uh, they have no idea what, what the significance of it was in other timelines. Sort of the... Um, uh, and I think that... Uh, I'm sorry? Um, sort of like the uh, green tunic in uh, Wind Waker. It's sort of that sort of... Uh, they have no idea what it represents, but they use it for when right. they become... It's just a, something that's age. traditional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that with uh, Ganon in the uh, uh, adult timeline, it's very it's very simple where it could just have been during the f- massive flooding, it got washed up in the flood. I, I doubt Skull Kid was able to get out of that situation. Um, and Ganon being at the bottom of the ocean, because that's what he do. Um, that's he, what he do. He just happened to stumble across the design at one point and decided he was very impressed by it to some degree. Um he is one of those people that's very, especially in that game, he's very thoughtful. He's very, um, he re- he reflects a lot, which is why he's such an interesting character in Wind Waker. Um, so maybe to him, the mask uh, represented um, that sort of lost potential that was Hyrule. Yeah. Because um, maybe he did know about its power. I mean, he was the king of evil <laughs> to an extent. Uh, so he, he perhaps knew about the uh, Majora's mask. Uh, which begs, to, begs the question, what if Ganon in Ocarina of Time was trying to find Midoriya's mask at some point in order to gain its powers? That's an interesting theory. I, l- I like the idea that that he would do that. Um, moving, moving on, we have uh, a couple uh, different little bits and pieces of, of gaming articles this week. Um, brought to you by the ZeldaInformer.com website. Just go to ZeldaInformer.com. And uh, one of the, one of the stories this week, it's another birthday actually, is that uh, Ocarina of Time turned seventeen today. That guy can go watch rated R movies. Ooh. <laughs> and um, and I he know... can pretend to be edgy because that's what teenagers do. <laughs> exactly. Now, yep. not only he can pretend to be edgy, but I know Adam. I think I think you're you're pretending to be a friend. Of no, well, he can time. actually be edgy because the polygons are terrible, but that's besides the <laughs> point. <laughs> well, did you play the uh, the 3DS version? Yeah, yes. but I, I thought we were talking about the one that was actually well, turning yeah, 17. Yeah, the, the, the original was turning 17. Sir. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, you know, have you seen Link's nose in that game? Holy yeah. Shit. That it thing looks, is pointy as hell. It looks nose-like. <laughs> it, it is not that po- I don't know whose nose is. You, I mean... I don't want to go there, but you've seen some pretty pointy noses, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Jew. We have established this over the past year and a half. You know, you didn't have to say it. I was hoping you wouldn't say it. Just I, say was, yes. I was unsure how to respond. <laughs> Jesus, that is so racist, Chris. God. That was, that's not. Adam's my friend. I love him. Adam's the baby. Um... <laughs> So I want to say happy birthday to Ocarina of Time, one of my very first Zelda game ever. How many, like what was that? I know Adam. I don't think that was your first Zelda game. Your first Zelda game was a, uh, a Link to the Past, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, <laughs> same, Adam. High five, best friend. Yeah, but Luke, which one do you like better? Um, a Link to the Link to the Past. Oh, jeez, Colin. What? Which one do you like better? Oh, between what? Ocarina of Time and a Link to the Past. Link to the Past. Wow, I am like I am with no one here today. This is the day that I I I'm rude. You you all, actually you all rude the day. <laughs> like I can't believe I'm the only one here. This right is what now you get for hosting time, Dick? I guess yeah. This is this is kind of what happens to the host of the show, Adam. I feel your pain. Put on the spot. I'm going to uh, justify my point with a link to the past because I have been asked about it before. Um, and the main reasoning is I only played Ocarina of Time reasonably recently whereas a link to the past i've played like 
50 times like that game is the game i go back to when i'm upset or having a bad day like that game is just like for me it's the exact opposite like i own i just recently purchased a link to the past for like my my wii uh like online store thing yeah um shop the eShop, jeez. You see that same thought? Not even memorable. Come on, Nintendo. What is this? Wait, what's the name of their new service? It's not Nintendo account. That's what we thought it was going to be. It doesn't it have now? a name. Yet? It's, uh, I think it's just called Club Nintendo for now, but it's, or something like that. New Nintendo Club for the 3DS. And Wii U. And Wii U Amiibo Bundle. Uh, pre-order now at GameStop. <laughs> Power to the players. <laughs> Luke, you are saying? Oh, I was just saying, like, it's that sort of game that I go back to when I'm upset or whatever. It's just, like, that one game that really cheers me up and everything like that. Like, it's just the game that I okay. really love, I guess. It's, 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 it's like, it's in your soul. Yeah, you know, it's like, it okay. It was the first game part that um, I played, um, aside from Tetris. Um, and it was actually given to me my grandmother, which only recently passed away. Um, so I'm actually playing through a... Um, Again, just sort of as a, mem- a memory of her sort of thing. Like, that's just sort of the mm-hmm. way I do that sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, it's like that. just that one game that I can go, that has a lot of importance to me and all that sort of thing. Because it really, it's really what actually got me into gaming in the first place, um, aside from, like, Tetris. <laughs> Which is it's interesting. Which is more or less just a phone game now. So I mean, you know, <laughs> you know. So Zelda Informer has a website. They did a um, they did a survey. I, uh, they do a survey every year about like, um, just general. They ask general questions about like, uh, you know, the the viewers of the website to like ask them like what what's this instance? Uh, what was the first Zelda game they played? And out of everyone that did the uh, the survey, thirty nine percent of people said Ocarina of Time, the original, was the first Zelda game they played. And A Link to the Past had a uh, 14%. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would figure it makes sense because I guess it's a, a lot older people start with A uh, Link to the Past. And I've, the site's demographic, I believe, is uh, a little younger than um, uh, what age? I have no idea. A little younger than, uh, I want to say, they're between 13 and 17, maybe. Uh, actually, I'm wrong. The age pro- like the majority age probably is they use the website is between 18 and 24. It's around 49%. 13 and 17 is 24%. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I just find that really interesting that these are like the, the two biggest games that, you know, people say as like what, what really got them into the series. Um, mm-hmm. it's like the never ending battle between Adam. I don't believe Ocarina of Time is the, like the best Zelda game. But like by far I don't. Um, I, it's really good. It's not, it's not a bad one. It's real. I, I think to myself it's really good. Uh, I, I, however, Majora's Mask is my favorite one. I think that's the best one. Um, I, Feel free to disagree with me in the comments down below or whatever you want, because I, I know I that's not my... disagree with me right here. Yeah, disagree with me right here if you want, guys. Come on, shove it in my face. Tell me, uh, tell me I suck. Yeah, just join the Skype yeah. call and um, start yelling <laughs> at uh, Chris because his opinions suck or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, tell me, uh, tell me how great of a host I am this week. <laughs> uh, t- don't do that. Um, but it... Uh... Anyways... So that's what's happening in the in the Zelda universe. Let's uh let's go back to uh, one of my favorite universes right now. This is um coming coming to you live from the wasteland. That is Fallout Four. Mm. Everybody, ha- now in in this call right now, I believe what Colin, you've played this game, correct? Yeah. Luke, have you played it? I have uh got ninety eight percent logged uh, on it. <laughs> Oh my god! And Adam, you're—I guess you don't—you don't own the game, do you? I do not, but I've played it. Oh, you want to go over and play it when you're when you're here? Yes, always. Yes, we... yes that would be nice. You'll never get me off that thing. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so the Fallout Four is receiving their first patch as of um uh, as of who knows when. Uh, actually, I don't think they they released an actual date for it, but they've announced like patch is coming. It's actually available for uh. PC uh, users uh, who like opted for like um, a beta type of thing. Uh, it says like who were a part of like uh, beta updates, and so what the patch does is it fi- it fixes a bunch of like uh, a bunch of remapping, and uh, so pretty much what that is is that any parts of the game where you've been playing and 
you notice like slight glitches with like you know all the textures and things around you. Mm-hmm. That pretty much that fixes all that. Which I don't know. I I think I posted these on Twitter. I've experienced that a few times. A little game breaking when you open a door and then you find that the room is zoomed in on a toolbox there and I'm like what the hell is going on and then I have to close and reopen the door and it's really funny another end I was walking down a hall in, in a building and then I look up and a roof panel is gone and it shows a screenshot of me from like 20 minutes ago in the game I'm like what the heck is that doing up there <laughs> it's just like it's you made the wrong yeah, choice but, boy yeah, exactly it's, go back it's and change funny. it boy um, the, the, these are normal Bethesda issues and stuff like that and um it, I like how, you know, they they took their time before, like, releasing, like, you know, just patch after patch after patch, doing it all in one, like, these bug fix, fixes. And so uh, I, I really appreciate that they do that. Um, game has... I know a lot of other people have experienced, like, other different, like, messes in this game. And, you know, they're going to be fixed. Uh, so all of you that haven't done, like, your little, um, your, your infinite caps, cheats, and hacks. They're not, like, cheats, they're just exploits. Same thing with, like, dog meat exploits. Mm-hmm. Uh, do those now before they are gone, I guess, if you want. Just a little tidbit of information for all you wastelanders out there. There you go. This is, uh, this has been Three Dog, and, uh, oh. I will, like, I'll catch you guys next time. Three Dog <laughs> in, in the game. What do you guys think? Have you guys heard the, the Diamond City, uh, new, like, like, radio guy? Oh, yeah. Well, I have yeah. him in the face. Didn't we mention this? Yes, we did. Yeah, we mentioned this before. We mentioned did, this oh, okay. I just to he, he sounds on. like Justin Rowland from Rick and, you know, yeah, he's he's Rick very insecure. Well, he's he's insecure. And I would tell you do a quest with him. And it's then called he... Two Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great guy. I don't know. When I first heard, I was like, "Is this really the guy they chose? <laughs> did they, yeah. did they let us?" Do I was kind of like, "Who's this goober?" And then I went, "Oh." I, I don't know. I thought it was funny. Yeah. No, that's um. Funny. But that's that's some good stuff. Any um any things going on? Any uh, other recommendations and games and stuff that you guys? Or any any cool pieces of news and stuff this week that you guys want to mention? Uh, Verdun, I think. Yeah, me and uh, me and Colin are playing Verdun. By the way, uh, if you guys are interested, me and Colin uh, just kind of started to do more streams. Uh, we're actually going to probably be streaming after this. So if you guys are checking out on Twitter, maybe you're there. Maybe you saw us. Maybe you were with us. Maybe you're spending a good time with me and Colin. It's a good time. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, I remember we were playing a few different games, of, uh, a few different rounds, I should say. Uh, and we had some pretty interesting moments. Uh, it's it's funny because Verdun is one of those games where you do either really well or horribly. You never do yeah. in the middle. You do like amazing. You get like five kills in a row. You get nothing. Um. Um. So, what? It, it sounds like it sounds like a lot of shooters to me, though. It's, like, no, it's 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 different because it's not here, really Adam, about the shooting. It's here, more, Adam. I want you to sell me. I want you to sell me Verdun like a a nineteen thirties like marketing man on the street. Have you heard about this new thing called Verdun? It's uh, it's, no, it's what, the, what is that doohickey? It's Verdun the hottest thing there? since the war. <laughs> right now, you and your family can play a World War One scenario. Fight on the Western Front along with all your friends, Billy the Hatchet Master and Jake the Sniper Rifle Master, and. Defeat them, the Germans or the French, depending on which side you choose. All right, so act I'm now in. and install it for <laughs> your computer, Madoki, because we don't have those yet. So that's what I'm think, calling them. Um, I don't think computer Madukis exist. It's basically it's it's a it's a shooter in the vein of the older Battlefield titles, like yes, yeah, that's, that's what you told me. Um, and 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 it also takes inspiration from newer battlefield games as it has a uh, it, it the whole real gimmick is the squad system basically you and three buddies get yourself into your own little squad and you rank the hell out of that um and it also takes a little inspiration from other shooters mainly um big world war 2 shooters like red orchestra and it's it's pretty much everything you'd want out of a World War One shooter. It's interestingly enough the only World War One first-person shooter ever. Yeah, I was gonna say World War One isn't really. Everyone's usually it's either World War Two or like because maybe... World War One was more about trench warfare than anything else. Yeah, and yeah. So it's hard and to so capture that in a game setting. Um, yeah, I, I can. But this can game does that. a fantastic job of it. I mean, aside from maybe a few strategy games, other than that, like World War One is just a setting that is non-existent in video games. I mean, mm-hmm. the only 
we only got this game. It's been in early access for a few years, but it was just released this year. And then we had Valiant Hearts by Ubisoft last year. Um, but Valiant Hearts is a little different. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm it's saying not a game it's, like I'm, this. it's still a World War One game. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I guess Wings would also count. There's a game called Wings that's all about fighter jets in World War One. But other than that, there's not really many World War One games. Historically, World War One didn't use much airplanes. You know, when you think about it, airplanes, they they they. No, but like... it sure did make for a great movie. So uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Okay. You're uh, right. Um. So I'm just sort of uh tripping out a bit because I'm just reading. They've announced that there will be more blood. Bo- uh, Bioshock games and Bioshock is yeah they're gonna make amazing. a permanent franchise yes I am which so... is kind of weird because it's kind of concerning I am uh, so excited. well the real question is who's making them right <laughs> that's the that's really what it boils down to it's gonna be Ubisoft uh, Ubisoft's taking Ubisoft. the lead on that one what Ew, I'm, wait, I'm, what? I'm joking just like the worst idea I could think of <laughs> all right cancel the podcast we gotta go we gotta show up at Ubisoft protest we we do. Oh. Uh, I'm I, Ubisoft has their hands full with things that they sort of make good and sort of make bad sometimes. Assassin's Creed. No, I didn't play this latest. I didn't play this latest Assassin's Creed. Heard there wasn't much wrong with it. I just, but you know, after Unity, we anything can happen. I played the latest anything one can really at, happen. at a friend's house, and I had quite a few problems with it. Just I, you did uh, like like what kind of problems? Um, go in detail with that. Well, the first thing is um, I'm a big fan of finding as many glitches as possible in as short amount of time as possible, and I managed to find five in like two seconds. Like it's very okay. buggy. Even <clears throat> like now after what a month or two of release, this is on the PlayStation Four, so that's kind of still you know not really good enough. Um, and also the story is a bit eh. Like, um, I loved Assassin's Creed 4 with the boat mechanics. I hated the story, loved the boat mechanics so much. The story wasn't that bad in Assassin's Creed 4. I thought it was great. Pirates? What do you mean? It, what do you mean? It you was kind of bad. Ed Thatch, you gotta see him how he turns to Blackbeard. You gotta see... I guess spoiler for that one. It's, the game's been out for years. Come on. Um, but, I don't know. I just... I didn't enjoy the story that much. And they keep on going to the random future pleb, and I hate the random future pleb. So much. Yeah, that, that's one part of Assassin's Creed that I never liked either. Yeah, it's just like... Desmond My- After Desmond Miles, it's like, why? No, even Desmond just annoyed the hell out yeah, of Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't like Desmond either, to like, be honest. Assassin's Creed is more about the history aspect for me. Yeah, like, every time... I mean, I, went- I didn't care much for him, but I did care about him as, like, protagonist. I mean, it was kind of... It kind of sucked when he went kaput, uh, in a sense, because it, it kind of, like, I kind of lost the connection I had to the the world as a result. Yeah, yeah, like like it could have ended after it. Sh- it almost should have ended after that because like, but that would have been a stupid note to end on. They got rid of Desmond, and then they just like gave up on the franchise itself, and just well, like, oh, we'll just no, because um, four didn't have uh, Desmond. It that's had the saying. random future. No, that's, play. yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying there. Fam. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I still, I still just, I. I don't like it when they go into the, like the future. I just feel like they should have just done that sort of old aspect where it's you're an assassin in Rome or wherever you're in that week. They should have like not made twenty of these games. That that <laughs> would be that also be great. Like, well, you'd actually be surprised to hear geez, that the original uh, Assassin's Creed actually didn't get all that great reviews. Like, but, no, because it's ew. not a very good game. Yeah, no. To be honest, like, I. I was always hoping that they would branch off away from, like, the, the Italy story and, like, uh, Ezio. Like, Ezio was great, but, I mean, I wanted so much more from the series. Well, yeah, and I because got they, that with... they, they milked that into the ground. <laughs> yeah. And like, then they were I, just yeah. like, we'll just milk everything. <laughs> like, I, I like the setting of 3 a lot. I know 3 is not is probably one of the worst. Everyone... I, I Actually, no, I want to say Unity is the worst, right? Everyone hates Unity yeah. now. Unity is the second hard. worst. Well, at least you could play Assassin's Creed 3 with Unity. You're like, oh, I think my <gasps> oh console's my broken. I, I will never forget the bug, the one bug I had in Assassin's Creed 3 that I noticed. I, I'm like in the middle of walking through one of the, like, I guess I'm on the Boston Harbor, like the New York Harbor. And like, I, I, I watch a carriage like go by and like, 
as I have a conversation with the person next to me while playing the game, I look back to the screen, I see the carriage flip over, do a 360, and like just it's going like through the ground and upside down, just walking across the screen. I'm like, beautiful. Oh, that's great. There's a really <laughs> weird uh, glitch with Assassin's Creed 3 where you put the game into the console and then you realize you're playing Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sounds horrible. The, the guy's like <laughs> driving the carriage and he's just like, Pro Tricks, uh, MOG Pro. Just starts doing flips and shit. Yeah. Honestly, the, I, I want to say my favorite server of that series is between Assassin's Creed 4 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Let's talk right. about Sony. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about, oh, hey, yes. let's talk about uh, Sony. We got yeah, a couple things about to Sony. Me- Actually, mention about Sony. We do need to talk about the, 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 the so they announced, or they didn't even announce, they they were talking to like a, 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 public, a company that does the gaming news, and they said, yeah, we're going to do uh, in quote unquote backwards compatibility with PlayStation 2. Now, Colin, explain explain this. Uh, here's the thing. Explain why that is and isn't the right. Here's the thing. What, what Everyone's doing. seeing um, this new. Okay, so PS2 is a console that's 15 years old now. Um, Happy birthday, PS2. Uh, you still got it like a month to wait on that one. Uh, <laughs> Happy not birthday, PS2. <laughs> almost 15 years old. Um, it is a system that. Has Can't been, confirm has it been, is a system. Has been out for so long that so many things have come and gone within the gaming time span. And one of the issues with um, backwards compatibility, aside from the fact that these systems are not actually backwards compatible, is licensing. And that is the reason why, even though Microsoft has like a big new fancy uh you know, 360 backwards compatible emulator on the Xbox One, you still have to wait for certain games to actually be available for you to play. Um, Because the company has to give the okay on that. And this has been a problem with the PS2 ever since the PS3, when they dropped backwards compatibility and they just said, oh, we're going to release them on the PSN store. So if you really, like... Now, I would love... The way everyone's making this news out uh, because recently, mm-hmm. recently the reason why all this news happened was because the latest Star Wars bundle for the PS4 actually comes with some play- Star Wars PlayStation 2 games that have been emulated on the PS4. And the issue with this is that just like the PS3, they're going to be really selective about what games will be available and you will preferably have to go on to PlayStation Network and buy them and download them, just like you do on the PS3. I really don't think... A lot of people are making it out to be as if it's going to be like the Xbox, where you put a disc in, and it'll play it, but I I don't don't think think they haven't confirmed or denied it, but like, just based on what they've done in the past with the whole classic system, like, it's probably going to be the same exact thing. It's just going to have a a, maybe a bigger library of PlayStation 2 games. I'm just really hoping they bring back Silent Hill 2 and Ratchet and Clank, because those games were the absolute bomb. Like, if that ends up being the case... Which, it, it, it would be weird for Sony to do anyway, because it's like, oh, now the PS4 can play PS2 games. Not one or three, but just two. Which is weird, because they would be it would be better if they could do three, because three ones runs on the same thing as one. They have the same chipset, so then you could do two words with one stone. But except um, that the PS3 uses the cell, which is a whole... Well, there was a reason why some PS3s could play PS1 games, but not PS2. No, all of the I PS3 think. games can play PS1 games. Because yeah, the, the PS1 was a tiny enough chip that you can shove onto anything and nothing matters. That's why the PSP can play PS1 games. That's why the Vita can play PS1 games. Uh, regardless, I feel like it would have been better for them to do do it that way rather than do it in the way that is just the PS2. I'm not saying the PS2 is irrelevant, but I mean, I feel like people will want PS3 more rather because that's where they got most of their HD collections that were on PS3. Yeah, that's where they again, got all their problem being other things. Impossible thanks to uh, the cell processor. That, and that is ultimately Sony's fault, which sucks. I, I love my PS3 and my PS4 so much. I just want to be able to play. I want to be, want them all in one system. As I'm saying, as I, as I was saying, nothing's like confirmed or set in stone. If, yeah. if oh, the PS4 backward, if the quote unquote backwards compatibility works just like the Xbox 360, where you can just take any old PS2 game, shove in the disc, and it'll then their membership read program it. is new. Is moot. Huge. Is it? it isn't PSX like next year, or not next year, like next month? Yeah, you know, like coming soon. So they're probably gonna make announcements then. Maybe. Um, and if it if it works like that, where you just put the disc in and it reads it, and great. 
I'd love to play Outrun on my PS4 at 1080p, 60 frames. Amazing. Fantastic. Um, same with Black and, I don't know, Persona 4, Tony Hawk's Underground. Really great stuff. It's not going to be like that. Yeah. But- As it looks right now, it probably won't because even Sony hasn't been keeping up with releasing all of their old games on PSN. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I don't even feel like... Still PSX can't play Crash probably. Bandicoot on a Vita. <laughs> Thanks, Sony. Do you mind if I change topics a little bit? Sure, what do you want to talk about? Um, well, with, while we're still on the topic of uh, Sony, uh, Bloodborne, one of my uh, favorite games of this year, has uh, released its first expansion, game? The Old Hunters, today. Mm. Have you played it? Great. Well, it came out Is today. I mean, how could I... <laughs> Mm. My internet's like a caterpillar. It goes very, very slowly. L- listen, you see, what I wanted, what I was waiting to do, because I still haven't purchased Bloodborne yet, because I was waiting, because I, after I found out they were doing the Old Hunters, I was like, oh, okay, maybe they're going to do Game of the Year Edition, which they are. And it comes out in, like, uh, the 27th, I believe. Um, and the cover art, I, it looks yeah. awesome. Even though I'm not buying the game just for the cover, I'm just buying it so I get the, the whole bundle there. Yeah. And get the cool physical copy. Instead of doing all that digital stuff. Because I'm a man of physical things. All right. Well, I mean, Bloodborne is just absolutely just so good. Like, they um, they did what they did with Dark Souls. And I love Dark Souls. But they changed up the formula enough to make it its own game. Like, they made it so Dude. much more fast-paced and everything. I'm trying to think of, like, uh, of another company that makes, like... It's sort of like, you know, how Bethesda, they'll do... Fallout, and then they'll do Skyrim or Elder Scrolls, right? Yeah. So it, it's sort of like, like that type of stuff, right? Like they'll, they'll change it just ever so slightly, but like the, the, oh, they'll yeah. make it work. Awesome. Well, all right, gentlemen, I want to thank you all for for joining me on this week's podcast. You're uh, the the greatest host ever, Chris. Uh, not to be mistaken with the other greatest host ever, Adam. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hello. So, Hello. like I said. I want to thank all you guys for joining me this week. Thank the fans. Remember, if you guys have anything you want to submit to the podcast, just email ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Follow us all on Twitter. That's Chris, that's Adam, Colin, and Luke. You can find all the awesome links and things we talked about in the link dump down below. Thank you, and enjoy this awesome outro theme song by Jeesh. It is the Hero of Time remix. Thanks, guys, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Eat food. Hi ho, uh, Timothy uh, Frog here for uh, Zelda Informer. You know, yeah, what are you doing? Watch out!
damn it. Uh, or whatever. Um, Adam. Adam. What? Adam. What? Adam, wake the fuck up! <clears throat> wake up! What time is it? It's it's sometime. I don't know. I've been running. I I ran down here from New York, so I, it could be a couple days. I. How did you get here? I ran. Dude, it's Thanksgiving. Let me go. To just like the country, I ran. Dude, it's, it's Thanksgiving morning. Can I just go to bed? Are you sure about that? Yeah, Colin. What? Fuck. Is it about the episode? Well, you know what? You're you're about to be real thankful well, for the next two and a half years. Why? What? What is? What am I going to be thankful about? You. I, I. I brought my book. I brought my greatest American, best American mystery stories of the 19th century. You mean that old racist book you found? Yes, that that old. I. Uh, I mean, it said the N word once, but I, I. I don't know if I'd say the whole thing is racist. I mean, you might as well, since you're here. You're not even gonna say hello to me. I ran all the way from New York, and you're not even gonna. I'm. I'm not even sure I'm awake right now. You are awake. Slap me. There. Ow. Pick a. Pick a number, one through twenty. Whoa. Uh, seven. All right. The Fatal Secret by Daniel Webster in the year 1850. Can you write a dictionary? An aged man without an enemy in the world, in his own house and in his own bed, is made the victim of a butcherly murder for mere pay. Deep sleep had fallen on the destined victim, and on all beneath his roof, a, a healthful old man to whom sleep was sweet, the first sound slumbers of the night held him in their soft but strong embrace. The assassin enters through the window already prepared one into an... Uh, no, I'm just bad at reading. Okay, keep going then. The assassin enters through... There is a lot of long sentences, though, so it may sound just sound like one big sentence, oh, okay. like 30 commas. I'm going to make coffee, don't mind I'm. Me. I'll. Here's a Sprite. Oh, okay, thanks, man. I brought a lot of Sprite. The assassin enters... Did you pee in this? I've, I've started reading this sentence about three <laughs> times now. <laughs> Or he just entered, Through the window, or he just already prepared. Twice. Shut up! I'm cutting you off! It's my character! <laughs> Through the window, already prepared into an unoccupied apartment. With noiseless foot, he paces the lonely hall, half lighted by the moon, semicolon. He winds up to the ascent of the stairs and reaches the door of the chamber. Of this, he moves the lock by soft and continued pressure. Till it turns on its hinges without noise. This is a really long <laughs> sentence. And he enters and beholds his victim before him. This this story, by the way, is only two pages long. I, 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 you couldn't have chosen only, a shorter story. This hasn't even been a page yet. No, this is like the, this is like the first paragraph. Oh my of the god, page. this is going to go on forever. The room is uncommonly open to the admission of light. The face of the innocent sleeper is turned from the murderer, and the beams of the moon resting on the gray locks of his aged temple show him where to strike. This whole paragraph is one long sentence. <laughs> Next paragraph. <laughs> the fatal blow is given, exclamation point. And he wrote an exclamation point and then wrote and then started a new sentence with and. And and isn't even upper, like, is not even, like, capitalized. It's just a lowercase and. You, I mean, and the you victim can passes. A, uh, a sentence with and, you shouldn't. But also, you're supposed to put it with a capital. Regardless. Yeah, what a what a dingle! What a, 1850, more like Civil War got him. Ugh. And the victim passes without a struggle or emotion from the repose of. Is it repose or repose? Repose. I'm pretty sure repose. Yeah. yeah, I've never read that word before in my life. Cut this part out. Um, from the repose of sleep to the repose of death, he said it twice. It is the new new paragraph. It is the assassin's purpose to make sure work, semicolon, and yet he plies the dagger, though it is obvious that life has been destroyed by the blow of the bludgeon. <laughs> That's some repetition. Didn't he stab him? It wasn't a bludgeon. It, the blow of the bludgeon. That would imply he's like a, a blunt weapon. It doesn't say anything about a knife or a stabbing. I thought it said he stabbed I think you're him. just... No. Oh, man, I'm just confused. <laughs> Cause like I was like here when we were like he was picking a lock for like eight weeks and then he saw the guy and then he was just dead. I mean those semicolons are pretty sharp. And that's that's right. He even he even raises the aged arm that he may not fail in his aim at the heart and replaces it over the wounds of the the ponya. Wait, did he? Is it an old guy killing another guy or is it just a, a guy killing an old guy? Because if you're assassinating an old guy, that just seems like a waste of time. He's gonna be dead in like two years anyway. To finish the picture, he explores the wrist for the pulse. <laughs> Not content with just stabbing him, he has to make sure he's dead. <laughs> 
He feels for it and ascertains that it beats no longer. It is accomplished. The deed is done. He retreats. <laughs> he retreats, retraces his steps to the window, passes out through as he came in, and he and escapes. He has done the murder. No eye has seen him. No ear has heard him. The secret it is is his own, and it is safe. Ah, lowercase gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> that was a dreadful mistake. Such a secret can be safe nowhere. The whole creation. I think that's grammatically correct, though. So I wouldn't call it. Ah! A... Exclamation point. Lowercase gentleman. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess it was a horrible mistake. <laughs> the whole creation of God has neither nook nor corner where the guilty can bestow it and say it is safe. Not to speak of that eye which pierces through all disguises and beholds everything. True, it is generally speaking that. Murder will out! True it is that Providence ha yeah. Providence is capitalized. I mean, he, he's talking about heaven. And, I mean, it's it makes sense that he would capitalize it. But he's not talking about, like, Rhode Island. No, 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 no. He's talking about Providence, which is a thing. I think. Oh, so is... Listen, I'm a very bad Christian, so you're gonna have to... <laughs> Yeah, uh, providence is uh, referring to the protection uh, or care of God. It's also a place. It's also God or nature Morty! providing protective nature. So, Morty! What? I'm a bad Christian and you're a good Jew. It's like <laughs> Jesus again. Yeah, so in this case, he's referring to God as like a protective being or a spiritual being caring for him or something like that. He might also be referring to the place. All right, All right a cut this, cut cut this portion out. Why? It's, it's fascinating. It <laughs> it's not to me. True, it is. Generally speaking, that murder will out. True, it is. This is how it's actually written, by the way. That providence hath so ordained and doth so govern things that those who break the great law of heaven by shedding man's blood seldom succeed in avoiding discovery, especially in a case exciting. So much attention as this discovery must wait, come. Wait, wait. So period, he's taking period, like period. a paragraph and a half to say, "Yeah, people are going to notice when you murder someone." Yeah. What a douche. <laughs> what an eight. Yeah, what is Daniel Webster. <laughs> I hate your dictionary. I bet he's not even in the Webster that the the monkeys sing about. That's a reference that no one's going to. I don't get it, and I'm here. <laughs> You, I'll send you that song after this. You'll just show it to me. You're right oh, here. No, I'll, no, I'll just I'll open up your laptop and show yeah. you because I'm I'm standing right here next to exactly. you. Exactly. You see, you, you see, I'm snapping in front of your face. I get it. Yeah, you're in front of me. Okay. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit you real quick. Are you ready? Please, Three, please don't. Two, one. Ow. Ah, look, look at that. Why? Ooh, I I I'm here. Why would you do that? I know you're here. A thousand eyes turn at once to explore every man. <laughs> Everything, every circumstance connected with the time and place. A thousand ears catch every whisper, semicolon. A thousand excited minds intensely dwell on the scene, shedding all their light and ready to kindle the slightest circumstance into a blaze of discovery. Audible.com forward slash Colin Dram. You, you heard it here from first, folks. <laughs> Meantime, the guilty soul. Audible.com forward it's... slash Zelda Informer Podcast. I'm going to murder you. This is me cutting you off again. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, the guilty soul cannot keep its own secret. It is false to itself, or rather it feels an irresistible impulse of conscience to be true to itself. It labors under its guilty possession and knows not what to do with it. The human heart was not made for the... Res the re <laughs> The human heart was not made for the residence of such an inhabitant. It finds itself preyed on by a torment which it dares not acknowledge to God or man. A vulture is devouring it, and it can ask no sympathy or assistance, either from heaven or earth. Two more paragraphs. We're on the second page, Morty. The secret which the murderer was one page? soon. Yeah. It took like, the secret it took like which ten the minutes. Murderer <laughs> the secret which the murderer possesses soon comes to possess him. And, like the evil spirits of which we read, it overcomes him and leads him whithersoever it will. He feels it beating at his heart, rising to his throat, and demanding disclosure. He thinks the whole world sees it in his face, reads it in his eyes, 
and almost hears its workings in the very silence of his thoughts. It has become his master. It betrays his discretion. It breaks down his courage. It conquers his prudence. When susp Final paragraph. When suspicions from without begin to embarrass him, and the net of circumstance to entangle him, the fatal secret struggles with still greater violence to burst forth. Final sentence. It must be confessed. It will be confessed, semicolon. There is no refuge from confession but suicide, and suicide is confession. Daniel Webster, The Fatal Secret, 1850. Wasn't that great? Can I go to bed now? No! Oh god, do we have- No, you can't, because now! Now! You know what I'm gonna do now, Adam? Are you gonna slap me again? No! Yes! Here it comes! Please don't. Stop, please. Three, no. two- no. Ah, there you go! Now, Adam- You didn't even Adam. count all the way down that time! I know! I'm a goof! Now, Adam, I'm gonna read something even more terrifying than a mystery novel. The- the- the, the copyright The back of the license? CD case! No, the back of the CD case for SimCity 2000! The ultimate city simulator don't, and more. Don't just go th Here they are. Don't go through my drawer like that, dude. Here they are. SimCity 2000, the SimCity 2000 Urban Renewal Kit, SimCity 2000 Scenarios Volume One, The Great Disaster, and a bunch of. scenario challenges made in the usa screen display displays may vary by computer sim city 2000 and maxis are registered trademarks of maxis inc all other trademarks or registered trademarks are the properties of their respective owners can you just slap me again you've been talking for 30 minutes no because now i'm going to read off my credit card number <laughs> two nine Hey everybody, this is Adam and Colin from Zelda Informer Podcast, wishing all of you a happy Thanksgiving, a safe Black Friday, or I guess by the time you listen to this, you've already done all that. So, hopefully, you, had, you got some good deals, you had some good food, and you made some good memories. Uh, let us know what you thought of this episode and this little filler at the end down below in the comments. Uh, Colin- God bless us, everyone! Colin, don't you ever strap me off again! <laughs>